So we about to go interview uh, Miss Deja Perez, 93.9 WKYS, Kiss FM. And that's what's popping. <laughs> you gonna get it. If you if you listen to the show, you get what I mean by be popping. Girl, you like it's right here with me. Hello, looking for caller 19202-432-WKYS. Got these tickets for the Universe Soul Circus. Get at me right now, 202-432-WKYS. KYS? I vote yes, WKYS. Who says? It's Mike. Hi, Mike. Congratulations, you caller 19. What's going on, y'all? Y'all here with international journalist, the media prince. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to this beautiful, talented young lady right here, <laughs> radio personality extraordinaire, and you see she's popping, Miss Deja Perez. <laughs> how are you doing today? Hola. Okay, I am well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So good. take us back. How did you start in radio? So I, um, I originally started kind of doing promotions and stuff like that for Hot 99.5. Mm -hmm. And then I um, went over to PGC and I did research at PGC, which basically is like you'd call people and be like, what do you think of the new Rihanna record? What do you think of Beyonce's record? Whatever. And um, I asked the PD, I went in his office and I was like, I want to be on the air. And he was like, ain't nobody on my air if you don't know how to run the board, because I don't have a background in this. Like I, I have a bachelor's in criminal justice. So he was like, ain't nobody on my air on my airways that they can't run the board. And I was like, all right, well, how do you run the board? Like, and so I would come in overnight, unpaid. Um, and that was grueling. And I would literally wake up in the morning, I had a day job, then I'd go to PGC to do research, and then I'd go home and sleep for a few hours, and then I'd come back two to six overnight unpaid and learn how to run the board and then go home sleep for about an hour wake up and do it again it was bananas um but then i became a board op and then once i became a board op basically they were short staffed one day and they were like well you're gonna be on the air tonight and i was like mm, i don't think so and they were <laughs> like yeah you wanted it like let's go and I, it was horrible it was for like a really long time. Look I talked a lot around. of I talked a lot of trash, but I wasn't ready, you know, but it's all good. Yeah, we we've evolved and yes, now I'm popping. Are. Exactly. So of course you said you you we went in overnight. You made mm -hmm. sure you learned your craft. How important is it to learn and harness your craft before getting in front of the mic? Super important. So the thing is like in the beginning when I was like first becoming a jock, they really I felt like they kind of kept me in a box. Like I would see all these other jocks do all these cute tricks and twists and things and I was like, "Oh, I want to do that." And they were like, "No, you got to learn the fundamentals." And I was like, "I, you know, but it's super important because the thing is when something goes wrong on the air or something happens, like your ability to react to it and fix the problem quickly has to be on point. And okay. if you're so busy trying to like learn tricks and and cutesy stuff that you don't have the foundation down pat, you're gonna get screwed, you know what I mean? And and stuff happens, like it 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 is a constantly moving machine. You know, mm -hmm. radio is 365, 24 seven, like even when y'all have snow days and everything like that, we gotta be up in here. So it don't matter. So right. it's constantly going, it's never time off or you know, hey, whatever. This is Melissa from so. Maryland. Okay, okay. Yes so of course your brand, your name itself rings bells and you have definitely Thank built you. a platform where everybody knows you. <laughs> um, Is it ever pressure? I've never really thought about that, actually, to be real honest with you. I don't think so, but I love what I do so much. Like, I, um, for the first time in like my entire career, I took a week off, which is unheard of for me. Like, I'll take a day here, a day there, but I never take like a full-on week. And I took a week, and I was like, oh my god, like I don't know. You couldn't wait to. I don't know what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? I was like, oh my god. But I used to be so afraid to take time off. Like, oh, mm -hmm. what if they had somebody come in and replace me? And what if they're better and everything like that? And I kind of had to have my own little like personal Jesus, like come to Jesus. Like, what's meant for me is for me. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how how tight you try to hold on to it. You know what I mean? Like, if right. it's meant for you, it's meant for you. If it's not, it's not for for you. You exactly. know? So. Exactly. Um, but there have been times like I've have I've got really <laughs> I'm a little clumsy, but I have um <laughs> I've got really bad like wrists and feet like I get really bad tendonitis so I've had like surgery like multiple times so I have come out of surgery for my wrist is in all like a cast and everything like that and I'm doing what's popping on one hand and then I'll go home and recover like I love what's popping like it's like people have a baby this is my baby yes yeah. so speaking of what's popping how did you mm -hmm. come up with that because that is what when you hear that. 
automatic know that's Deja Perez. How did you so interestingly, like the station kind of came up with it originally. Mm -hmm. Way back when Two Face was on the air, they wanted him to have an entertainment report and they came up with the name and everything like that and they were like, we want you to do it. And I was like, mm, I don't know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. Like I was always interested in like, I'm the person that reads the like the tabloids in the grocery store, right? Like I'm like, ooh, Kendall's pregnant or whatever. <laughs> Kylie's pregnant or married or what? I've always been that person, right? right? But I never thought about like doing it in this like realm, right? So um, when I had the opportunity to do it, when I first started, it was really like perfunctory and really like just newsy. Like Chris Brown was arrested today and such and such and such. It was like no flavor and no like I wasn't in it. It was just me telling a story about some shenanigans that went on. So, but as I got more comfortable, kind of like anything, like when you're riding a bike and you don't know how to do it initially, you're scared. So as you get more comfortable with it, you get in your zone, that's kind of what happened with what's popping. So it kind of became more me and it like more of my personality came through and more of like, I just stopped worrying about everything else and was just like, baby, like Chris Brown <laughs> did this. And you know what I mean? It's like you and me sitting here talking about it. So right, right, right. that's how it it's evolved into what it is now. Okay, okay. So of course, you know, you just mentioned that you took your first vacation, mm -hmm. your week off. So of course, we love what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and of course it can get overwhelming. How do you can find the fun in what you do? So that it never becomes to a point where it's like, this is too much or this mm -hmm. is a lot right now. So I probably say it's a couple of things. I always try to keep a little chunk of time during the week, whether it's a few hours on Sunday or whatever, that I can just sit on the couch and like binge watch and Netflix and chill. Um, that's my like relaxation kind of situation. Um, also, all my family is in Jersey and they like give me my entire life. I try to get home about once a month. At the most, it's like once every six weeks. Mm -hmm. So spending time with them is completely like rejuvenation for me. I'm usually not on my phone. I'm usually like I just put it away because I want to have just time with you and un undisturbed and, you know, not like distracted. So that's kind of those are probably the two things that I do and I pray a lot. That's probably the main thing. That's good. That's the that's a, the the thing because a lot of people Correct. forget that it's him that got you where you are, baby. So is it hard to step out of the what's popping brand? Like if you just don't want to be Deja for the day, is it hard to avoid that? Because everybody now knows you that and want to say it and want to take a picture. But I know love that. I, th I like. I'm still like so humbled by it. That's so I, I no, that doesn't bother me. Like it's funny because what'll happen is people don't always know my face. A lot of times they don't know my face, mm -hmm. but they'll know my voice. So like I was in Walmart, like everybody, you know what I mean? I was in Walmart waiting in line or whatever. And this woman was looking at me and she had the cutest little boy. She was standing in front of me. She had the cutest little boys and I was kind of watching them playing the card or whatever. And then there was a lady behind me who said something and I turned around and said something to her and the lady in front was like, I knew that was you. She was like, I wasn't sure when I looked at you. She was like, but when you started talking, I knew that was you. And I was like, hi, Aww. I shop at Walmart like you. <laughs> you know, <Aww>. normal. <laughs> so how do you continue to um, perfect your craft? Because you're constantly working and it looks like you're constantly gaining skills. How do you keep yourself on your toes? I don't know. I think because you're constantly just doing it. Mm -hmm. And so there's never really an opportunity to let your skills, like it's kind of like a football player or a baseball player, they're kind of always practicing. And so that that's like a muscle that's always getting exercised. Um, in terms of like, I think that social media has helped things, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of like information being accessible and things like that immediately. Um, but aside from that, I think that's about it. Just kind of doing it every day. Okay, okay. So in three words, how would you sum up the Deja Perez experience. Mm. <laughs> That's a hard one. Um, blessed. Um, That's a great one. Genuine. That's a great one. Um, and happy. And happy. That's a good one. You know what I thought you were going to say? What? Popping. Oh, that would have been super <laughs> cute. See? I'm working that. That's a skill set I need to work on. I got to do that better. Okay. And popping. But yeah. So what's, what's next for you? So I don't know. I mean, everything is in God's hands, but I have a couple things in, in the works. In a perfect world, I would love to syndicate what's popping and have it in a bunch of different markets so that everybody can know what's popping. It's, we claiming um, it. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Um, that's number one. Um, number two, I'd like to do a little bit more TV. That's kind of the plan. Um, but thirdly, I'm actually working on a nonprofit, um, and it kind of stemmed from, like, I put on weight, like, 
most people put on weight and it's annoying and whatever. Um, with you, because right. food is delicious. And hello. So, um, but anywho, um, there is, I read this book and it's called What They Don't Call, What They Don't Tell Fat Girls or something like that. And in the book, um, the girl talks about specifically Abercrombie and Fitch because they had done like a fashion shoot and that particular uh, company doesn't have a plus size line. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of, anywho, in the book, she talks about how even though the, the fashion industry has become more understanding of full figured women, it's really only if you're an hourglass shape and if you're not an hourglass shape, you're still kind of like ostracized a bit, right? So it got me thinking and I'm like, damn, that's really, S-H-I-T-T-Y, like I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, so, but I curse a lot, so um, <laughs> it's been a challenge just now. Um, but it's really crappy, you know what I mean? Like, And I feel like there are so many things, like with social media, we're kind of constantly, as women, we're constantly bombarded with images of how we're not good enough, how we're not this enough, like we're not, you're not beautiful enough if you don't look like this, or have this, or have these this makeup on, or contoured, or wear this, or have that push-up bra with the string thing that I can't stand because it doesn't work for girls with boobs. It Whatever. don't work at all. It, does it My really? My cousin got one and was completely upset. It fell off in the club. Really? <laughs> it seems like it would, but I mean, it's not, it's not meant for big girls, but anyhow. Um, so there are all sorts of things that I feel like you're kind of constantly bombarded with, like you're not good enough. And right. that's kind of the, the underlying message is that you're just not good enough. And um, I wanted to do something different. Originally, I was going to do it with um, adult women uh, because, you know, we, we have issues too. Um, but I thought it was super important to hit our girls um, because they're, they're starting so young with these ideas of plastic surgery and things like that. And, and it's what you choose to do with your body and things is completely your right. But it, I want you to do it for the right reason. You know what I mean? Like if you, let's say you always felt a way about your nose. Okay, I understand that. You know what I mean? But I don't want you going out here getting um, butt implants because you think you're going to pull a guy that way. Like mm. it's the wrong reasons, you know, that, that people are doing things. So I want to build up our, and I struggle with self-esteem like the next girl. You know what I mean? And I want to build up the confidence in our young girls and their understand their self-worth and that they're beautiful the way that they are. So... The name of the, basically it's going to be a workshop and it's, and we're, I'm going to like kind of have different things that will help build their self-worth and confidence and things like that so that they can enter in the world as a confident, young, beautiful woman in the skin that they're in. And I think they'll take it great from you because you're a real woman speaking real experiences. You're not putting on a facade like. I so this so. a this a no this is real work and I, we're claiming it thank today. Thank you, thank you. So that's in works. So I've like got the paperwork started and all, all that. I'm just kind of working on a few last minute details before I get everything rolled out. But yeah, it's happening. So I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. So she's about to be even more popping. Indeed. So before I let you go, I like to play this game uh -oh. with all the guests. It's the same. I, um, I do this and it's weird to be on the receiving end. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. It's the same game I play with everybody. It's called either or. Okay. Whoever mm. the, I'm going to give you musical guests. Okay. The people you say stays. If you don't say their name, they're gone. Okay. So we're going to do the males first. We're going to do... Uh, <clears throat> now, is this that uh, people, people that I want to interview or what? No, they can't exist. The person that you're going to oh. say okay. can exist. That's the person pressure. you don't say okay. cannot exist. All right. So let's hit them hard right now. Tupac or Biggie? <laughs> you pick who exists. I'm passing on that one, no. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go light on me. Come on, that's too hard. Jay Z or Nas? Uh, I would say Jay, but my girlfriend Tiny's gonna kill me because she like has been in love with Nas since probably <laughs> 1990, yes. whatever. I don't know what year, but a long time. Okay, uh, Eminem or J. Cole? Mmm. I love when y'all get like this. I think Eminem because I think that he was groundbreaking. Okay. Like in that he broke the stereotype of the white rapper. Like he ha bought X an XM radio station like in the beginning when no one, like he's really like a, an astute businessman. Okay, okay. Drake or Kendrick Lamar? Kendrick all day long. No shade, Drake, but Kendrick all day long. Okay, 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 okay. So let's do the ladies. Let's do the ladies. Of course, the 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 one that's in the highest thing right now, Nikki or Remy Ma. You already kind of made me upset earlier. So you are right. You gonna get over it. It's all right. <laughs> um, I mean, we fly high. Um, probably Nikki. Like, and I and I f's with Remy so hard, but big picture, probably Nikki. Okay. Like what she's done to like 
kind of mainstream hip hop and things like that and kind of allow people to see us in different um, platforms. Mm -hmm. Probably Nicki. Okay, okay. Lil' Kim or Trina? Hmm. Lil' Kim. Okay. But I love Trina. Like, that is not shade. She's the baddest chick. Okay. Missy Elliott or Left Eye? Missy. Come mm -hmm. on. Like, the creativity. And that's mm -hmm. no shade to Left Eye. Um, but the creativity, the creative genius that is mm -hmm. Missy Elliott, you need to get your entire life. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay. So <laughs> she just aced the either or, even though she didn't give me the Tupac or Biggie uh -uh, one. Uh -uh. So maybe we, maybe we can get that off camera. Uh -uh. Let them know where they can follow follow you at. <laughs> at Deja Perez, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, social media. Yeah, and um, DejaPerez.com. Though, don't judge me. I haven't updated that in a minute, so I'm gonna work on that. Can we get the? Um, please get you to say your famous line before we head out of here. I'm Deja Perez, and that's what's popping. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out MLB. We out.